In the previous video of this series, you learned about the Bitcoin blockchain. You saw that a cryptocurrency, such as Bitcoin, is essentially an electronic ledger. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of Bitcoin transactions and unspent transaction outputs, namely UTXOs. Let's begin with a very simplistic view, but we'll focus on the details later. Suppose for a moment that only 20 Bitcoin were ever created and all of these are owned by Dave. Dave wants to pay 20 Bitcoin to Mike, perhaps for some work that Mike did for him. So Dave creates a transaction. We'll call it transaction 1. This transaction has an output, namely the 20 Bitcoin that Dave is handing over to Mike. The transaction is validated. I'll say more about that in the next video. And Mike is now the proud owner of 20 Bitcoin. If this business was being transacted through a regular bank, Dave's account would now have a balance of zero and Mike's account would have a balance of 20. But there's no such thing as a Bitcoin account and there are no such things as account balances. The transaction record is the only evidence that Mike now has 20 Bitcoin and Dave has none. Now, suppose that Mike wants to pay Sally 20 Bitcoin for some goods that she sold to him. Mike creates a new transaction, transaction 2. This transaction has an input, the 20 Bitcoin that Dave gave to Mike, and an output, the 20 Bitcoin that Mike wants to pay to Sally. As before, the transaction is the evidence that Sally now has 20 Bitcoin and Mike has none. If Sally now wants to pay 20 Bitcoin to Mary, she too needs to create a new transaction, transaction 3. The input of this transaction is the 20 Bitcoin that Mike said she now owns and the output is the 20 Bitcoin that she wants Mary to have. Once again, the transaction itself is evidence that Mary now has 20 Bitcoin and Sally has none. And as always, there is no record of any balance because there are no individual accounts, just a sequence of transactions. In fact, there were never really any coins at all, just an electronic record that Dave once owned something of value and evidence that it was passed from person to person in a sequence of transactions. Once a transaction has been validated and added to the blockchain, it cannot be reversed. If Mary decided later that Sally had paid her too much, or even that she shouldn't have paid her anything in the first place, Mary would have to create a brand new transaction to pay Sally back. Now let's consider a different scenario. As before, Dave has 20 Bitcoin available to spend. I'll talk about where they came from in a moment. This time, Dave only wants to pay 5 Bitcoin to Mike, and he wants to keep 15 for himself. So Dave creates a new transaction, transaction 1. But this time, it has two outputs, the 5 Bitcoin that he wants to pay to Mike, and 15 Bitcoin that he wants to keep for himself. You can think of the original 20 Bitcoin as being rather like a £20 banknote that can't be torn apart. If you wanted to spend only some of that £20 note in a shop, you would have to hand over the whole banknote and you'd receive some change. That's rather like what's going on here. Dave is paying 5 Bitcoin to Mike and he's paying himself 15 Bitcoin in change. Sometime later, Mike wants to pay 3 Bitcoin to Sally. He creates a new transaction, transaction 2. The input of Mike's transaction is the 5 Bitcoin he received in transaction 1 from Dave and there are two outputs, the 3 Bitcoin he wants to pay to Sally and the 2 Bitcoin in change which he pays to himself. Sally now has 3 Bitcoin. Perhaps a few days later, Dave wants to spend some more of his Bitcoin. He wants to pay 3 Bitcoin to Charlie. Dave creates transaction 3 the input of which is the 15 Bitcoin he received in transaction 1, from himself as it happens, and there are two outputs, the 3 Bitcoin he wants to pay to Charlie and 12 Bitcoin in change which he pays to himself. Using some of his newly acquired wealth, 
Charlie decides to pay three Bitcoin to Sally. He creates transaction four. The input for this transaction is the three Bitcoin he just got from Dave, which happens to be exactly the amount he wants to pay to Sally. So there's only one output this time. Three Bitcoin for Sally. No change. Finally, Sally wants to pay Mary four Bitcoin. Sally has already been paid three Bitcoin from Mike and three Bitcoin from Charlie, but neither of these amounts on its own will cover the four Bitcoin that she wants to pay to Mary. So she has to create a transaction with two inputs. These inputs add up to more than four Bitcoin, so she also pays herself some change. Sally's transaction therefore has two outputs, four Bitcoin for Mary and two Bitcoin for herself. You can see that every input refers back to the output of a previous transaction. Now, you might be wondering where Dave got his 20 Bitcoin from in the first place. In other words, what was the input for transaction one? Well, Dave is a Bitcoin miner. As I mentioned in the previous video, hundreds of new transactions are collected together into a new block which is then added to the blockchain every 10 minutes or so. The task of creating new blocks from valid transactions is called mining. You'll learn more about how transactions are validated before they can be mined in the next video. Suffice to say for now, mining can be done by any individual or any organisation by running the appropriate software on their computer. A Bitcoin miner's computer is called a mining node. There are tens of thousands of mining nodes competing against each other to add the next block to the blockchain. Why? Because a miner is rewarded with a certain amount of brand new Bitcoin every time they succeed. In May 2020, this amount became 6.25 Bitcoin. The amount is reduced by half approximately every four years. Also, every time anyone creates a new transaction, they pay a fee. The fees are not shown here, but in reality the inputs of a transaction must be sufficient to cover the outputs as well as the fee. You have the option in your Bitcoin wallet to specify the amount you want to pay as a fee whenever you create a new transaction. The higher the fee you pay, the more likely your transaction will be selected to go into the next block, because the miner gets to keep all of the transaction fees for a new block, as well as the block reward. Whenever a miner creates a new block, a new transaction is added to the start of that block automatically. Transaction zero, if you like. In transaction zero, the miner is paid the block reward plus the fees. The very first transaction of a block is called a generation transaction or a Coinbase transaction. Not to be confused with the cryptocurrency exchange that goes by the same name, Coinbase. In this scenario, when Dave paid Mike in transaction one, he was spending some of the Bitcoin that he had already mined. In this scenario, the Coinbase transaction must have come first. Just to be clear, all of the transactions you can see in this scenario are not necessarily in the same block. This sequence of events might have happened over several months or even years. Indeed, a transaction must have already been validated and added to a block before its outputs can be spent in a later transaction. In reality, an active Bitcoin user might have access to the outputs of a great many previous transactions, including various amounts of change that they've sent themselves in the past. These are referred to as unspent transaction outputs, or UTXOs for short. If your Bitcoin wallet tells you that you have, say, 26 Bitcoin available to spend, it's actually telling you that you have 26 Bitcoin available in one or more UTXOs. By the way, you can think of the total value of all the UTXOs in the Bitcoin system as the total amount of Bitcoin in circulation. This transaction was created by Richard. It has four inputs, including a UTXO in a previous transaction created by Ralph, another UTXO in a transaction created by Laszlo, and two from himself 
which he paid to himself in change in previous transactions. It has two outputs, 20 Bitcoin for Tim and 1.8 Bitcoin in change. You can see that the change is a little short because Richard decided to pay 0.2 Bitcoin as a fee. Richard didn't have to worry about any of this, by the way. His Bitcoin wallet took care of everything for him. He simply specified how much he wanted to pay Tim and how much he wanted to pay as a fee. Then his wallet selected an appropriate combination of his UTXOs from all of those that he owns, and it created these inputs for him. Although two outputs like this is typical for a transaction, a single transaction can have several outputs. You can, for example, pay lots of different people at once with one transaction. The beauty of this system is that there is no need to maintain an account balance or indeed an account for anyone who uses Bitcoin. What an individual actually owns is exclusive access to all of the unspent transaction outputs that name them as a recipient, and all of the information about who owns what is contained within the history of transactions. To pay someone in Bitcoin, you're not taking money out of your pot, as it were, you're simply passing on payments that other people, or yourself, have already passed on to you.